All right, there we go. <clears throat> so today, guys, chapter 13.3, buoyancy. Um, I'm sure this is the topic that you've heard plenty about, um, or you, at least you've heard something about. Okay, well, what is buoyancy? Typically, guys, what are we associated with buoyancy? Water. What are they floating? Uh, so the most common example, we we'll talk about what? A beach ball. Floaties. Very floaties, very beach balls, so the boats, or um, buoys. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, Kelsey, we're talking about buoys. Uh, however, uh, however, less commonly, we might talk about things like uh, like hot air balloons, okay, uh, or submarines, things of that nature. Uh, and so today, what we're going to be going through. The, the science of buoyancy. Question to start off with. Can two things occupy the same space? Yes, I believe so. Can two things occupy the same space? Can me and you occupy the same space? No. Yes. No. This is the same space. I'm in a space, you're in a space. Can we occupy the same space? No. I mean, to occupy the same space would mean two things fitting inside of the original volume. That, that, that can happen. The volume needs to expand, right? Okay. So the first thing you need to know, guys, for buoyancy is that two things cannot occupy the same space. No two things can occupy the same space. So if I have something in a space and I put something else in that space, either one the space needs to expand, or two, whatever was originally there has to move. Okay? Okay? So, well, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a second. Let's look at this example, guys. Let's say I have some water and a boat floating on the water. Let's look at the pressure that's being applied to that boat. Okay? From above the water... What is the pressure being applied? Atmospheric. Atmospheric. atmospheric pressure, right? So there's a there is a pressure from above of one atmosphere on the very top surface of the water. What is the pressure? One atmosphere. But if I go below the water, some is the pressure one atmosphere anymore? No. No. The pressure would be. One atmospheres plus whatever the additional pressure is, right? So that would be rho g h. Remember, density times gravity times the depth, height. Okay, so on the bottom of the boat, since it has some depth in the water, do you agree that the bottom of the boat is going to have more pressure than the top of the boat? Yes. yes. Okay. If the bottom of the boat has more pressure than the top of the boat, then what could I say about the force on the bottom as opposed to the top? There's more. Okay, so there is more force pushing up than there is pushing down. Okay, so the boat, since there's more force pushing up than there is pushing down, I know that boat is going to do what? It's, it's going to have a net upward force. Okay, I'm not talking about gravity right now. Okay, I'm talking about from pressure. Okay, there is a net force due to pressure here. Okay, that is called buoyancy or the buoyant force. Okay, and the buoyant force uh, is the upward force caused by being submerged in a fluid. Okay, the upward force caused by being submerged in a fluid. What all can be a fluid? Water. Water. But so what categories? Liquids. Liquids yes. and gases. gases. Okay. So anything that's submerged in a liquid has a buoyant force. force in what direction? Up. Uh, anything that's submerged in a yes. gas has a buoyant force. force that is up. up. Okay. So right now, is there a buoyant force on you? Yes. Yes. Why aren't you floating? Gravity. 
Uh, gravity. Gravity. Okay, so right now, what is stronger? The buoyant force or the gravitational force? Gravitational. The gravitational force. Okay. Okay. And but in water, however, now now this is now. Okay. Now now now, think think about this one, guys. In water, if you're floating on the top, what is greater, the gravitational force or the buoyant force? The buoyant force. Think about it. They're equal. Okay. Because if there is a net force, then there has to be an act. Acceleration. And if you're floating on the top, is there an acceleration? No. No. So if you're floating, then the buoyant force so if equals like the gravitational force. So at the bottom of the pool and then you start moving up, is that... If, so if you, have, if you take a beach ball down to the bottom and then it goes up really quick, okay, in that case, the buoyant force would be greater than the gravitational force. Yeah. So like... Um, yes. Isn't there some kind of ocean called like the Dead Sea, like where people just float yeah. automatically? That's uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there in a second, because we we haven't covered the stuff that we need uh, to to cover that. Okay, so in a hot air balloon, guys, why does a hot air balloon float? More buoyant force. That had not have to do with the buoy. Well, it does have to do with the buoyant force. Hot air is less dense. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear about hot air rises. <laughs> hot air is less dense. There's just no reason why hot air rises. It just does that. No, no, I'm being, no, I'm being, no, I'm being, it's more than the air. Guys, why does a hot air balloon float? Buoyant force is greater than the gravitation. No. No. Hot air, hot, so that's just a property of hot air. Hot air just rises. Guys, why? Huh? It's less pressure. Why? It's less pressure. No? Guys, if it's floating, then the buoyant force is equal to the gravitational force. That causes it to float. Interesting. So, question. <laughs> What's the they could, if, they, if they're rising up, then if they're going up, then the buoyant force is greater. But if they're just floating there, then oh, it's going to I didn't say going up, I said floating. Floating. Floating implies going up. Alright, so question. Is there any difference between the buoyancy force of a hot air balloon filled with cold air and a hot air balloon filled with hot air? Yes. Is there any difference? Is there any difference between the buoyancy force between a hot air balloon with cold air and a hot air balloon with hot air? If it's filled, if it's filled up, just like regular. No. Okay, a hot air balloon with cold air has the exact same buoyancy force as a hot air balloon with hot air. However, a hot air balloon with hot air just weighs less. It's a cold air balloon. Huh? Because it wouldn't float because it would weigh too much. You fill it with hot air, hot air expands. So the, that big area up there becomes less dense. And so now it weighs less, and so there's more. There's no, buoy, there's no more buoyancy force. There is a more net force in the upward direction. The gravitational force is lower, and so now the, now the buoyancy wins instead of the gravitation wins. How are we going to call this chapter buoyancy when every single time we say buoyancy, you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> Chapter 13.3, gravitational force. <laughs> no. Okay, um, so our buoyancy force, guys, is going to depend on two things. Oh, question, uh, before I get there. Let's say I have a beaker. And I put a metal object inside of the beaker. Does the metal object weigh, if you're just going to weigh it, does it weigh more inside of the beaker or does it weigh more outside of the beaker? It's the same. Outside. Same. Outside. It weighs more outside of the beaker yeah, because you. inside of the beaker there's more buoyancy force. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a great example. All right, guys. Our buoyancy force depends on two factors. Okay. Our first factor is the density of the fluid. Armand. 
Might have to edit out that. I don't know if I'm allowed to say y'all's names on video. You can set me to say. You can set me saying your name on your video. You can bleep it out. Wait, are you censoring yourself? Are you not supposed to say names? I don't know. I, you know I don't know the rules. Um, all right, so the first factor, guys, the density of the fluid. Speculate with me. As the density of the fluid increases, what do you think is going to happen to the buoyancy? It's going to increase, okay? So, since water is more dense than air, which one has a greater buoyancy force? Water. What's the second thing? What now? Oh, back here. Oh, of the fluid. Yes. Question. This one up here, we said that there's a buoyancy force because it's air on top and air is exerting less pressure than the water, right? Yeah. However, down here, there's no air on top. So is there a buoyancy force for that? Start with the Y. There's no air on top of the block. Yes. Is there a buoyancy force even though there's no air on top? Yes. Yes. Because look here, guys. At the top, I have a certain depth. And at the bottom, I have a greater depth. So my pressure at the bottom is still greater than the top. No, I was, that was the sentence. Okay. You were looking up as if you were like, so even a raindrop would have some kind of. You're talking about in air? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. Wow. There, it's not great enough, but it. it all right. The second factor, guys, that affects uh, buoyancy is the volume of the fluid displaced. That's ugly. If you displace more fluid, what do I mean by displace? Move it, okay? Remember in the beginning, two things can't occupy the same space? Okay, so if I move more, then what do you think is going to happen to the buoyancy force? It's going to go up, okay? And to demonstrate, guys, two things can't occupy the same space. Uh, I have some water here. Oh, um, now i got to shut my head. <laughs> Uh, I don't need musicals in here, okay? Um, did you not mean that? Are you slowly, like, unteaching everything that you've taught us to do? Like, you've taught us to do musicals in class, and now you're like, oh, I don't know what Alright guys, I have a certain uh, I have a certain volume of fluid here. To me it looks like it's right around the 700 milliliters, right? If I take something else and I put it in there. Okay. It's a, it's a broken microphone. Okay. <laughs> This is an expensive lecture. <laughs> Just rude. Anybody got a watch? <laughs> cell phones, cell phones. <laughs> All right. Notice, guys, when I, when I put the microphone in there, the level of the fluid increased. Okay? So since the level of the fluid increased, however much that level of fluid increased, that's the displacement. Okay, it was at 700. Now it's at 750. Okay, now it's at 750. Okay, so this displaced 50 milliliters of liquid. Okay, if it displaced more liquid, then the buoyancy force would be greater. How could this displace more liquid if it was bigger? Okay, it was bigger. Yeah, yeah, if it's bigger. Okay, so we can use. We can use uh, the amount of fluid displaced to tell us how much uh, how much mass something has. Okay, so if I want to know how much mass these have, uh, I can put them in the water and uh, and look at the fluid displaced. We said if something is floating, it's not accelerating, and that means the buoyancy force is equal equals the gravitational force. So if I take this and I float it in there, then I know. However much fluid gets displaced is equal to the 
The, the weight of this, or the mass. The mass of the fluid displaced is going to be the mass of this. Okay? So when I, it's right now, it's at 700 milliliters, looks like to me. Okay? When I put this in here, guys. I said, oh. I'm not doing a good job. Last year, I had students get way more than this in here. I'm just not very good at it. We'll, we have, we'll, we'll play with that later. Okay, it looks to me like uh, it goes up to. I don't. I don't like that measurement. Like, what do y'all think? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. Looks like. Okay. Look. Seven. I don't think that's helping. That's not that's not that's not okay, well, that's what I have this color, okay? <laughs> that's uh, 750, and it looks to me like it was a little bit below 700, actually. Maybe. We'll say, we'll say 675. Okay, so the, the displaced fluid is about 75 milliliters of fluid, right? Okay, so 75 milliliters of fluid was displaced. Okay, so if... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if 75 milliliters of fluid was displaced and the density of water is one gram per milliliter, then I know that the mass of water that was displaced is equal to the density times the volume. Yes, sir. So that's going to be 75 grams. Okay, so the weight or the mass of this is 75 grams. Okay, that's a pretty rough estimate because this is not a very accurate. When I weighed this, I got like 80. Okay. But, yeah, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. Okay, so the first factor, guys, that, that influenced the buoyancy force was the density of the fluid. What is more dense, salt water or fresh water? Salt water. Salt water. So what is better to float in, salt water or fresh water? Salt water. Salt water. If you take a boat in fresh water and you're driving along, putt, 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 and then you go into some salt water, what happens to the boat? Crash. It's going to rise. Okay? It's going to rise. I mean, it's not going to... I mean. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about like roller coaster rides here. I mean, we're, you know, we're just we move up a little bit. All right. Here's but here's the question, guys. When the boat goes from the fresh water to the salt water, we said that the boat's going to rise some. What happens to the buoyancy force? It is greater than the gravitation. It's floating. It's the same. Okay. So what? changes since the density increased guys what changed to make the buoyancy force the same the density of the water what that that already the the volume of the fluid displaced when the boat moves up it displaces less less fluid and so that makes the buoyancy force the same okay if i have a boat floating in fresh water, and I take it and I move it to salt water, it's floating higher. Right. The buoyancy so the force is the same in both of them because it's less volume displaced in the salt water. Because right. it's higher. It's the, buoyancy. the buoyancy force is the same because the weight of the boat is the same. You're not, you're not liking that? Do you understand that or you just don't like it? Okay. okay. Um, so, in the, uh, in the Dead Sea as... as uh, this young gentleman up here, I just want to say that, was, was uh, uh, I was just, I just, I'm just using Armand, as Armand was asking earlier, <laughs> as Pete was asking earlier, um, the Dead Sea is one of the, uh, one of the densest bodies of waters because it has an extremely high concentration of salt. Okay, so this is somebody floating uh, in the Dead Sea. What is that? Okay. 
That's that's not me. Okay. That's Okay. That's that's somebody that's somebody floating in the Dead Sea. Okay. Um, it, I mean, it looks like if that was regular water, I would say that she must be on some sand or something. Okay. But she's completely floating. Okay. All right. All right. She has a. Uh, an extra set of arms that's like kicking through the water or something. Okay. Because that's in, re in regular water that that wouldn't be too possible. Okay. However, in in the Dead Sea, uh, we see that level of floating. Question: The buoyancy force. If she floats in fresh water and she fro floats floats and she floats in salt water, where is the buoyancy force greater? They're equal. Okay. However, in the Dead Sea, she is doing what differently? Displacing. Displacing less water because the water is more dense. Okay? Uh, what else? Okay. Um, all right. Well, I, I don't need those anymore anyway. So uh, let's, uh, let's do a few examples. And the first one's real interesting. Well, I mean, they're both interesting. I mean, the second one's interesting. The first one's kind of just... I mean, everything I do first one's, the first one's easy. All right. Designers are making a ship, guys. That ship is going to go in salt water and fresh water, and they want to be able to compare uh, the buoyancy force in the fresh water and the buoyancy force in the salt water. Okay? They're assuming here that... Uh, or I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to stay at the same level. So when it's in the salt water, it's going to be able to carry more. Okay, so it can carry more. So what we're trying to see is how much more can it carry in the salt water than the fresh water. Okay, so in, uh, in fresh water, I have 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. That's the density of fresh water and salt water. My density is 1,029 kilograms per cubic meter. That's average, and it can, the more salt you have, the denser. The less salt you have, the less dense. Um, and so the displacement is 400 cubic meters. Okay, so the force of buoyancy in the fresh water is going to be 1,000 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, remember our formula is rho VG. Okay, so that's my rho. Okay, my volume is 400 cubic meters. And my gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is uh, rho VG. Okay, so the force of gravity, I mean the force of buoyancy, okay, the, uh, the maximum amount that this ship can carry is going to be 3,900,000 newtons. Okay, that's including the weight of the ship. Okay, so if the ship weighs 2 million newtons, then I can carry 1,900,000 newtons of cargo. Okay, however, in the salt water, because we're more dense, not in our heads, but in you know in the salt water. Yeah, that was an. Some of some of us are more dense than others. This is not, this is one thousand twenty nine. Uh, try again. Alright, um... <laughs> Alright, so, in the, uh, in the salt water, guys, we're going to be able to carry an extra 100,000 newtons of cargo. Okay? It's a lot. It's considerable. Um... Yes. What? I don't understand your question. I'm thinking about ships. To answer that question, that's the reason why even though some boats come to like a point, okay, that, that makes them faster, 
when you come to a point, that's less volume that's in the water, and so that's less buoyancy. So a barge doesn't need to come to a point because we're not so worried about maneuvering and speed. We're more worried about buoyancy. The Mississippi River is a freshwater. Yes. Fresh water. Well, ish. Ish. <laughs> I mean, so, I wouldn't drink it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, why did those um, cruise ships, like, you know, tip over? Why did they tip over? Yeah, because does that have to deal with any kind of buoyancy like the... Why yeah, to be honest, I'm, I'm, yes. <laughs> all right, that's, that's a great, that's a great question. Okay, the Titanic, well, I mean, <laughs> but before, but the Titanic, first of all, when it started to fill with water, was the, was the buoyancy force any different? No, but the weight of the ship increased because it was filled with water instead of air and water weighs more. Okay, so I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't angry. You fools! All right, let's try the second one, guys. Come on. Anyway, I, I didn't mean for that to, I'll sound extremely compassionate, compassionate and <laughs> example number two. <laughs> All right, guys, the density of dry wood is around half that of water, so that means that rho for wood is 500 kilograms per meter cubed, because that's half. Okay, how many kilograms of water can you place, uh, how many kilograms of weight can you place on a dry sheet of wood? that has a mass of 8 kilograms, so the mass of the wood is 8 kilograms, uh, and the dry wood stay afloat in fresh water. All right, let's do a little diagram here. Here's my wood. Um, I'm going to have a weight on there. That's my best drawing of a weight. Uh, and so I'm going to have a downward gravitational force due to the weight, and I'm going to have a downward gravitational force due to the wood. Right? All right. So, if it's going to float, that means that the sum of these two forces needs to equal the upward buoyancy force. Right? Okay, so here's, here's a path. I'm going to figure out the volume of water displaced by 8 kilograms of wood, which is easy because I know the density and I know the mass. Okay, using the volume of water and the density of water... I can figure out the buoyancy force on the wood, subtract the weight of the wood, and I have how much weight can go on top of that. Okay? So let's start. All right, the volume that's being displaced is going to be equal to the mass divided by the density. Okay, so the volume displaced is going to be 8 kilograms divided by the density, 500 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so the volume is going to be, I think it's 0 0.016 cubic meters. Okay, that's the volume displaced by that wood. Okay, so therefore the force of buoyancy on that wood is going to be rho VG. And so that's going to be equal to 1,000, because it's displacing water kilograms per meter cubed times the volume times the gravity. And so the buoyancy force on a piece of wood that is floating in water is 157 uh, uh, newtons. So that's the buoyancy force. Everybody followed me so far? Yes. If I subtract from that the weight of the wood, then I figure out how much weight can put, I can put on top. So I'm going to subtract from that the weight of the wood, so that's going to be 8 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so the weight that, be, that can be supported is 78.4 newtons. Divide that by 9.8, and so we get 8 kilograms. So if a board has a density 
of 500 kilograms, half that of water, then it can support its own weight in wood. So if you're on the Titanic and you're sinking, you want a board that weighs at least as much as you, okay, uh, if you want to stay afloat, okay? What now? No, P looks like this. That's P. What? All of us saw all of us saw you like writing that P equals five hundred while you were standing up and walking sideways. Standing up and walking sideways. I don't I don't like that. Okay. Um 